Hello and welcome to this show off discussion where we celebrate amazing websites built by some of the world's most talented web creators. My name is Ash and I'm the community manager here at Elementor. And today I'm joined by Lauren, Alfian and Jalal from Brave who are a Bali based branding and web agency. The website which we'll be discussing today is risenow.us. So welcome everybody and thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you so much, Ash. Thank you. It's really great to have you all here. Let's get started and perhaps you can just all tell us a little bit about yourselves. Sure, I'll start. I am Lauren, a founder of Brave Factor, and we are a digital agency that works primarily with nonprofits, um, helping them, you know, hit their goals and clarify their branding message. Hello, my name is Jalal. I'm a graphic designer here in, in Brave. And I am Alfian. I'm a developer in Brave. Thank you all for telling us a little bit about yourselves and what you do. So let's talk about Elementor and your journey with Elementor. How did it start and how is it going? It started, actually, um, Alfian was the first person to join Brave. And we both, um, we used to do everything custom in WordPress and it was driving us crazy. So we started Brave Factor with Elementor um, and just kind of learned it, gosh, Alfian's like six years ago now, five years ago. Uh, and all of the websites that we build are with Elementor for our clients. Uh, the reason why we chose Elementor was specifically because our clients usually do have limited budgets or they have limited resources. And a lot of times we have to hand the projects off to them. And so by using Elementor, they can still have the independence to build their own, you know, cam campaigns or events or whatever it is, uh, rearrange email addresses, whatever it is that they need help with without using a web developer all the time uh, because, because Elementor is just so dynamic and so flexible for, for people that don't even know how to code. So that's something that we really love about it. And it really helps us to help our clients and, and, and sell more projects that way. Well, we're uh, very pleased to hear that. And wow, you've been using Elementor for almost as long as it's been around. You know, we're seven years old now. So six years into using the product, I'm sure you know uh, a few ins and outs uh, when it comes to building websites with uh, with Elementor. Um, so the, the project today, the, the Rise Now project, is what we're going to be talking about. Um, let's dive into what the scopes and the goals were for this project. Okay. Rise found us and they really needed help with telling their story a lot better. They had a DIY solution that their own team built, but it wasn't really working for them. And a lot of, you know, building websites, pages disappear or get broken or whatever that might be. So we helped them with creating a stronger brand strategy around um, their digital presence and building them a custom Elementor website that uh, had a lot of different features in it, like storytelling, uh, custom maps, and things like that. Yeah, usually when we work on a website or something like this, uh, we try to do a research first, for example, like uh, uh, their existing website or their previous stuff, because some of our clients usually they have like really great uh, visual identity or brand, but sometimes their website is just, like uh, Lauren said, it's very DIY. So they came to us, they need help to create something better, especially something that tells their story even better. So we really had to help shift the messaging as well as the, the design yeah. to, to be more uh, inclusive and tell more people's stories. Perhaps we could do a, a demonstration of the website. Alfie and I believe you prepared um, some screens for us to, to view. Yeah, sure. Thank you for the opportunity. When we building a website with the uh, for the client, we always try to think in the client perspective how they will manage the page, how they will change the background, how they will change change the image. Is okay. So if we see this this background here, there are three to four layers of background here. The first one is the wave. The second one there's a noise texture in this background, and the third is this image object here. And the fourth one is the background gradient here. I will show the back end for, for this. Since Elementor provides two kind of layer for background, is it the, the main background and also the overlay background? And meanwhile, we need four 
four elements of background. So we also use the B4 element to, to add the third element and also for the gradient as well. Okay, of course, we, uh, we use a public class that we set it on the general style that we put the, the public and the general style there. So we never dealing with each page and each, each elements. If those elements will be used rapidly, then we will use a, a class and we will put a public, public CSS for that. This is the section of the banner. So the first background of the section is we put the wave here. We put the wave. Secondly, is we put the the noisy texture on the design. There is a noisy texture there. So we use a B4 here as the element to add. Why? Because we want to save this the setup here only for client just to change the the object here, the background here. And also we, we set everything in general here. We never set everything that public on each element, but we set it on the global CSS. So everything here is global CSS, not depends on the page. One of the challenge is how we can always put the object in the section with this, this full width here, but we need to put the image always inside the container. There is require some additional CSS here. So that's why we put some, the background position calculating here. Honestly, we, we spend quite of time to find this formula, how to make the full width object always inside the container, whatever the container is. And it, sh it always should be dynamic, not static. So yeah, that's, that's one of the uh, challenge here in this in this project and of course while it succeed we are very happy for that that's a great demonstration of using native elemental features with custom code i saw you used um, css functions and, and all kinds of stuff to achieve that that four layer um complex layout i had no idea when i looked at this i just kind of appreciated the really nice design and the flow but there's actually quite a lot of work that's come into the background there i'm super curious about the accessibility feature you have on the side there. You may not have prepared something about this for, for our discussion today, but um, could you talk a little bit about that, Alfian? So we use this, this plugin actually to, to accomplish what, what we need with a small touch here. In this plugin, it's not just ready to use actually. We need to prepare with uh, what color that need to be changed and then what is the destination of the color. I mean, what is the change color? And also one of the interesting things about this, this plugin is where now we know that we need to use SVG for the icons or images that need to be changed. Uh, this is the logo of the, of the company. So we previously we use image, just, just a normal image. It's just an image with the link. But when we realized by using these accessibility tools, we need to change the color of something like font color or, or the icon and, and else. We also want the logos to be visible. If it's image, we are not able to change the, the color of the image. So instead, we always use SVG since there. So we can change the color if we need by these accessibility tools. That's really interesting. Um, use of SVGs, I think, is, uh, is generally quite good practice now when it comes to things like, yeah, you know, um, the, the clarity of the image and obviously the loading time, um, but combined with the accessibility options that you've added. Um, so looking back over the RISE project, which elemental features would you deem were vital for the success of it? One of the requirements was, you know, because the organization started with passing one law, uh, which is very remarkable in itself. But then slowly, you know, as more and more people joined this collective uh, kind of grassroots mm -hmm. movement, everyone started passing laws in their own states to give, uh, you know, sexual survivors some more support or um, toolkits or whatever that might be. So they wanted to create a map of the United States where you could click on your state and see what laws are passed, see what support is available for you so that you can actually go out and get that support if you needed it. 
So we worked with them to kind of pull all that data from a Google spreadsheet and put it into um, this, interactive this interactive map. Yeah, where there was, you know, all the content was a little bit different in some places. Yeah. So we had to make sure it was flexible enough. And um, we use a custom plugin tool, which I'm sure Alfian can help show. So there is a map there where, where the data should be dynamic and also has a text editor on the data so the client can edit it. So we build the data by using Jet Engine so the client can easily add the states, the data for the states. So this is the back end for the each states. And also the information here is quite complex where there is a link, where there is a bold and italic. So we decide to use the text editor here. And also there's a tab here. I will show you later about where this tab will, will be used. And then secondly, we use also a product from Jet Engine. It's a Jet Pop-Up. We don't want to build each state with each pop-up because if you decide to change the layout, change the color, change everything, you will have to touch all of those pop-ups. So now the challenge is how we build one pop-up and then the data will be dynamic from the CPT but it will be show, it will be visible on the map under the third party of the plugin of the program. So this is the first space of this map feature is preparing the CPT. And then also the, the second is preparing the pop-up. Here we create a map first from the map plugin. It's already set, so we don't need to input all of this. So we need the jet listing because the map is not connected directly with the pop-up. So we use a listing where this listing display all of the maps for each state, depends on which one do you click. So we need the listing, but we don't need to, to display the listing. We need this because we need the pop-up. We need the button here. When the state is clicked, we put some JavaScript code here. When this map is clicked, it will trigger the pop-up to be visible by clicking the button on the listing. When the pop-up is clicked, it will click the button here. And this button will, will open the pop-up, yeah. Wow, yeah, that probably took a few days to um, <laughs> to, uh, to configure and, and test, I'm sure. But thank yeah. you for that excellent demonstration. Yeah, sure. It's so great too, because we didn't have to build it completely custom from nothing, that there's so many plugins that do play well together that can also go into Elementor and not break everything else, yeah. that it just, it was really smooth, even though it is, looks a little heavy. <laughs> when you look back over this project as a whole, is there is there anything that you would have done differently? You know, we were practicing and we couldn't think of anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, which every single project, we have something that we want to change. And this one actually, we're pretty proud of. So we're, there's not too much that we would do differently. Um, it's actually one of uh, the projects that uh, quite smooth from start to to the end. Yeah, I mean, after That's six true. years of, of building websites with Elementor, it's no surprise. I mean, you've you've probably been there and done it all. You've you've you know made all the mistakes that can be made. Um, maybe not all of them. I'm sure there's more to come. But um, what a refreshing change to to finish a project and say, do you know what we wouldn't have done anything differently there. I know that's a tricky question and there's not always a, an answer for it. It's just something that I'm always really curious about when I talk to somebody when a project has been finished, um, just from a learning perspective, um, because if something uh, could have gone smoother for you, maybe it could go smoother for, for somebody else. Um, let's talk about the future. So what are your future plans and, and do they involve using Elementor? They do, they definitely still do. So we are constantly refining our processes, especially now when the tools are making web development and design so easy so that it's faster for us to build websites for our clients that, you know, there's no QA, there's nothing that we need to worry about because it's all done. Well, we're very pleased to hear that Elementor is in your, in your future plans. So that's great. Well, thank you for joining me today, Lauren, Alfian, and Jalal. It's been really interesting finding out more about yourselves, your agency, and of course, the RISE project. We will be sure to link to the winning website in the description below. 
But for now, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> Thanks.